Good morning, everyone. I'm Janet Pick, Director of Operations at NIC Hawaii. I'm here with my coworkers, Tony Tran, Manager of our Project Management Office, and Patrick Nakamura, our Creative Design Manager. We're so excited to be a sponsor once again for the Hawaii Annual Code Challenge. And this year, we're also thrilled to take part as one of the challenge sponsors. So our company, NIC Hawaii, is a local tech company. We've been the state's internet portal manager for the past 20 years. Uh, we design and maintain the main hawaii.gov website. And we also develop online services to help citizens conveniently do business with the state or county 24 seven from anywhere without having to visit state offices. So think about the importance of that in a COVID-19 world, not having to go into state offices. If you're of the older demographic, you may remember getting up early in the morning and sitting outside the Kalani Moku building to try and get first dibs on a camping site permit. Well, now you can avoid the wasted time and instead use our online service to book camping reservations. This is just one of our over 160 services that we offer. And these days with COVID-19, it's crucial to be able to do business and interact with the government online. So I'm gonna hand it off to Tony and Patrick. We'll talk about the challenge we're presenting today and they'll discuss the problem and resolution and provide some guidelines on how you can proceed with our challenge. So with that, here's Tony. Uh, these are pretty difficult times. Everyone is struggling with lots of questions about COVID-19. You know, there are a lot of questions linger on everybody's minds, like, you know, when can I travel to neighbor islands? Uh, can my pet get corona? When can I get back to the gym? So to find these answers, oh, exactly. we use whatever resources that are available to us. You know, the internet, uh, friends and family, the news, and our own doctors and hospitals for guidance. Uh, the state and counties have tried to take on this enormous volume of, of information and making it available you know, via the websites and the news. Uh, state call centers and hospitals have done a good job of fielding the brunt of these questions, but at times it might be difficult to reach them during high call volumes, or they may not be available 24 seven. So what people end up doing is searching online, but However, there's just so much information to filter through that finding a specific answer to these questions might be difficult. So, you know, in today's world, time is of the essence. Information needs to be distributed quickly so that people are educated and know what to do wherever they go. However, we don't often have the time to sift through tons of info to find the answer. And many of these questions that people have are questions that others have as well. You know, for example, you know, what areas have high number of cases? Uh, what should I do if I think I've been exposed? Um, and where can I get tested? So just to go through, you know, a really quick demo of what someone might typically do. So let's say I wanted to find out, you know, where uh, can I be tested for COVID in Hawaii? So I would type that in Google uh, immediately. Uh, I see the first result is Hawaii Pacific Health. I mean, it does look like it answers my question, but I'm not quite sure. I probably have to click in to do more research. As I scroll down, the next couple hits, I look, don't really answer my question. I kind of scroll down some more. And then I see something from the news might seem legitimate. And then something from a .gov site, uh, which now seems legit. So then as you can see, uh, I probably have to do a bunch of research just to find out, you know, where, where can I get tested? So, you know, the question is, how can we get answers to these critical COVID questions easily, quickly, and at any time during the day? Thanks, Tony. Um, as Tony showed, it can be tricky, even frustrating, trying to find answers when there's so much information out there. What if we could just be on a trusted site, enter a question and get the immediate response? Chatbots can be part of the solution. This is from a recent uh, report by NACIO, um, National Association of State CIOs. And in a nutshell, it says, chatbots are useful, make it easier for website users to find answers, are efficient and are available 24-7. Available this report 
lists a bunch of sites, uh, uh, excuse me, a bunch of states with uh, chat box. Here are a few uh, good examples, Mississippi, Utah, and Washington. Mississippi, uh, for their chatbot, they took more of a broad approach. It basically appears like if you enter anything related to COVID, it points them to their one you know, official COVID website. Um, Utah, uh, on the other hand, is, is another good example. Um, they, like Mississippi, also took the, you know, uh, brought up, um, sorry, integrated it on their um, overall state website as shown here. Um, there's a big red button, so you know to go to the COVID section. But there's also the chatbot, which uh, they've branded Porter on the right there. Um, and so I entered, uh, after the standard um, intro, I entered the question, where can I get tested for COVID? And right away, I got two very useful links. Likewise, when I when I asked, um, I entered, um, what are COVID symptoms? Then it gave me the appropriate link. So uh, yeah, really useful chatbots solutions out there. Um, that same report I, I mentioned earlier um, also says that nearly three quarters of states launched chatbots to assist government employees providing services related to COVID, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Oops. This, um, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. The report also um, lists um, the 36 states and their chatbots links here. Um, you can show, uh, you can see here, this is the top half of the, that list. And I don't know if you, if you all can notice the first thing that I saw, which is, yeah, Hawaii is not on the list, but we believe that this can change soon. So please accept our challenge. Um, you can build, build a chatbot prototype for COVID information and hopefully help people get critical information 24 seven. As you think about accepting our challenge, here are some helpful bits of info. Where to start? Um, first go to the hack uh, website and you know, download our, our challenge use case document, which has some details and requirements. Research high need and hard to find COVID-19 information, which help decide on the questions to answer. Look at available technologies. There's plenty of open source and free to use software such as Amazon Lex, BotPress, Dialogflow, et cetera. And other resources you'll be able to utilize include um, the informational sources such as the Hawaii Department of Health's website, as well as hawaiicovid19.com. Um, you'll, you'll need to set up free accounts with selected chatbot service. And our company will be a resource available to you as well, especially on Slack to answer questions. Thanks, Patrick. So I know many of you have already joined our Slack channel, so that's great. Good to see you all on there. So we're available if you have further questions or need um, clarification on our challenge. And as a reminder that NIC Hawaii is a local tech company, we're always looking for new talent and we do have an internship program. So we wanted to thank you all for participating in the Code Challenge. We're excited to see what you come up with and we're looking forward to talking with you further. Thank you. All right, thank you NIC team.